Hey guys, Stefan here, and in today's episode, I'm going to talk about something really painful, but hopefully something that every single one of us can learn from, and hopefully thing, just don't follow what I did, basically, because this £40,000 a month mistake cost me a lot of money, but also taught me five important lessons about running a chiropractic business. So what are the things you should avoid if you want to build a successful practice uh, in today's episode, whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're listening on a podcast, I want to show you how to set up your practice on autopilot without having to sacrifice your business, without having to sacrifice your team culture, really, really important point, without having to sacrifice the quality of the service you and your team provide. I want to share five lessons that I wish I knew before stepping down. I'm glad to say now that I have been able to step down and the business runs super successfully still, but it wasn't the first time I tried to do that. And also I want to share with you something at the end, which um, I think a lot of people will find helpful, especially if you are a chiropractor or a chiropractic business owner. So without further ado, the first thing I want to ask you, and probably the most important question is, what is the ultimate goal for starting your chiropractic business? I was lucky enough to join an organization for my very first job after graduating a long, 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 long time ago that helped me answer that question way before I started my practice. But think about this for you, whether if you're driving now and listening to this, or if you're watching this on YouTube, what is it that tempts you so much about starting or why you started the practice in the first place? Maybe the goal will change, but do you want more money? Do you want more control? Helping more people, working less, working more, all of the above. Really be brutally honest with yourself about this one because Ultimately, you want to one day be 80, 90 years old and really think, I built something meaningful. I had a very meaningful life. I helped a lot of people along the way and I made some money as well. You don't want to be 79 and think, I didn't build a family. I have a lot of money in the bank. I was just chasing the shiny material objects without having any fulfillment. But that's just the way my brain works, the way I process things, really thought would think, why would you like to build a business? And is business the right thing for you? And if you are, I don't know, doing 30, 35, 40K a month, what's wrong with that, right? So you don't have to do what we do and do bigger numbers and build bigger teams. For me, ultimately, for me it was freedom. Freedom of time, freedom of choice, freedom of who I want to work with, what I want to work on, and when I want to work on those things. That was my ultimate dream, but I had that in mind even before I opened the practice, because that helped me to choose what type of practice I wanted to build, how big the clinic was, the team, the services we provide, knowing my numbers, knowing what I needed to support in order to, to provide the services and get the turnover that we needed and all that stuff. If you haven't watched any of my previ previous videos, by the way, if you are tuning in on YouTube, go and have a look, because I did talk about kind of a little bit more about my journey and how we build our practice. Now, have a think about this. Secondly, I wanted to, before going into the, <laughs> the ugly, I wanted to share with you a, a more of the, the, the roadmap or the time frame of how my clinic, how, how it looked initially. But year one, we were just shy of 400K that year, annual turnover. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, year three, we were doing about 60 to 70K a month, a month. Um, and me being me, I thought, brilliant. I am an amazing business owner. I am going to be reading the e-myth and the e -myth revisited and I'm going to be working on the business and not in the business and I'm going to be an entrepreneur I'm going to step down and everything's going to be amazing and how little did I know if you're thinking about stepping down this is what you shouldn't do what happened was because I didn't have any solid systems in place I didn't have any proven automated standard operating procedures SOPs I didn't have at least two to three, what I call A players in my team at the time. That was probably now three, four years ago. I had no backup procedures if I had a single point of failure in my business, whether that was a manager, whether that was a chiropractor, whether that was a software, whether that was a diary debit system. I had no blueprint of how to structure a step down process because I hadn't done it before. And many of you may be in that same position. You're thinking, wow, I'm adjusting like, Lots of patients, I'm kind of the main breadwinner in the family and in the business. I want to step down, I want to take time off, I want to take a month off and go traveling. I can't because I haven't put all these things in place. Then maybe this video is for you. So what happened was, 
I did step down and it went from doing amazing to very, very, very quickly back to square one, probably within four to five months. What I was doing was uh, having to pick up shifts again, had to rehire management because I made a mistake of not putting the right manager in place. I lost an amazing team member who sat me down and said, look, I just didn't feel valued enough. And it was just so like, it really got me. And maybe this is even embarrassing for me to say, but I have to be transparent with you guys. It got me like really embarrassed about my identity because I cared so much about the business, helping people. Um, the reason why I started in the first place was to build an amazing team and build an amazing community and help people, but I failed. So these are the good times. This is today. Uh, seven years after starting the business, we do seven figures every single year. I have a big, happy, highly functioning team. I'm completely away from practicing because I did it the right way this time. So if you continue watching this video, I'm going to teach you a little bit more about if you choose to how you want to do that yourself. But please, 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 whatever you do, don't do what I did. And here are, because I did it and I made big mistakes, here are the five lessons I learned. By the way, guys, do me a favor. I put a lot of effort and energy into these videos and making this content and I hope it really helps people. And someone said once, if you think you've learned something, but it doesn't shift your behavior, your actions, you haven't learned it. So I hope these videos don't just like skim through them. And it's just another video that this Stefan consultant guy is, is making. They can change the way you practice. They can reshape your future, the family, the, the future of your family. They can put financial freedom on the table for you. They can take the stress away from you uh, if you choose to. So these lessons are, they're learned through hardship. They're not learned from a textbook. I do this and I live this every single day. I'm in business, I'm having my meetings with my team. Uh, we run campaigns. I organize different new patient acquisition channels. How do we help other clinics to do the same? So if uh, there was a video I made uh, last week where we talked about how we gained with this one skill, like five figures extra recurring because of that one skill. So go and watch it. It was a very, very simple campaign. It seemed simple to me, but a lot of clinics just don't do these things. So the first lesson is, and this is something I learned very early, as soon as I stepped down, automation should empower, not replace. And what I mean by that is your softwares, your systems should make your staff, make your teams, help them and enhance what they do, but not replace them. Maybe one day when AI comes in and it replaces CAs and front desk and automate services in terms of who responds on your website and how they respond, maybe. But that human touch will never disappear. We are human beings. We crave attention. We crave someone to say, hey, how is it going? And see a real smile. So that wasn't the first lesson I learned. The second lesson was I didn't involve my team in the process of stepping down the first time. And I wasn't transparent enough because I thought that they would think I'm this like, um, I don't know, big headed guy who thinks he knows it all. He's 35 and he wants to retire in a way. And actually that wasn't the case at all, but that was the voice in my head that I, I justified not giving them enough information to say I'm stepping down and why I'm stepping down. And actually the reason was I wanted to focus more on the business. I wanted to improve the services. I wanted to train staff more. I wanted to spend more time on the things that are not going well to make sure they would provide an amazing chiropractic care and build a multidisciplinary team and service in the community. So please, if you are thinking about, um, in fact, whether you're stepping down or not, it's you've got to involve your team. They have to feel involved. That's where team meetings, catch ups, weekly reflections, uh, leadership meetings come in handy. Lesson three, continuous training and adaptation. Um, when you're changing a software or when you're building a system to step down or when you are scaling the team and the business that you operate in, you, you have to provide this ongoing assistance to your team and you've got to give them a room to adapt and breathe. I remember when we swapped the software from a previous one, which was pretty good, but we had to build lots of backend systems to it, to our current software, which is called Zoni. And I believe it will change the landscape of chiropractic in the UK and later on Europe and in the States. It was a big resistance from my team. Having said that, six weeks of ongoing support of me being reassuring with them, showing a little bit of leadership, uh, helping them, training them, sending them to some of our other clinics to, to learn better how to use the functionality behind it. Now, if I ask my staff how they 
found it, they would have probably said, yeah, it was a bit stressful, but I, f I would not change it for the world. It's so much better. So you've got to give that time to adapt to new services that you provide to change your business structure. If you're hiring a coach and they like, sometimes I would offer to private clients to go in their clinic and train their staff. And that's something I actually really enjoy doing, but that can be something that they resist. Sometimes they get really excited about it. So super important lesson that I had to learn. The next one is probably the most important and that is people need you. When I wasn't doing well in business, and by the way, you, you don't have to listen to me, by the way, if this is not something that sits well with you and you don't really vibe with the style of coaching and consulting I do, that's fine. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying that I know more than most people. I've just made more mistakes. I've had more failure points. I've had more data points to test. So we've just done more experiments. Therefore, we've learned quicker than most UK and world clinics because of the organization I'm part of. But people need you. When I joined the company, uh, I kind of became the face of the brand. When I opened my clinic, I was the the, the kind of the attracting, not the attracting physically, just I was attracting talent because I was doing their interviews, I was doing the mentorship, I was coaching chiropractors, I was giving them the on, ongoing support that they needed. And then uh, I kind of disappeared, not necessarily physically, I just wasn't here because I was doing other things and I was thinking about kind of stepping down and really, really, really affected people in a negative way. And actually when I collected feedback, the number one feedback we had was, Stefan, I just, I just didn't really feel valued. And that really hurt me. So I made a promise to myself that if I ever build and rebuild a business, and I have now, that the number one thing that I need to focus on is my team and my team culture because they are my business. Without your team, you cannot provide the service that you want to provide. Regardless if it's massage, chiropractic care, selling supplements, cutting people's hair, fixing people's cars, whatever the service is. Without the team, you don't have a business. And finally, the lesson I learned the hard way is that the quality of your service is paramount. Whatever service you try to provide, the core service for us is chiropractic, you have to think of who is the most important person, and that is usually the patient. So if the service changes, if the service improves, if the business model changes, if you introduce something different, if you change the software, if you change your consultancy firm, if you change your people that do your PPC campaigns on Google, you've got to focus on the patient because that always wins. So here are the five lessons I learned the very hard way. However, this is what I wanted to share with you guys today. Now, if you made it so far into the video, or if you're watching, uh, sorry, listening this on a, on a podcast, there will be a link to my actual limited company or my company's organization chart. Now, it's very difficult for you to visualize this if you're not watching it. So if you haven't subscribed, go and type in Practice Peak or my name, Stefan Gospelin, for YouTube, and you will then be able to actually see what we're looking at. But let me try and show you why I was able to step down and how we managed to structure the business in a way that runs with or without me and it still runs as effectively as it did before. So we'll just have to try and see if that actually works. And great, perfect. So on the top here, if you're listening, there is a, a category that says a limited organization, limited company organization chart. And then if we scroll down, you'll be able to see that it says director or directors. So myself and my wife are the directors of the company. Um, underneath, we have an area manager who is in charge of all the practice managers that we have. So each clinic has a practice manager, including my own clinic. Um, and those practice managers kind of are kept accountable by myself, by the area manager. Um, and it's important to have some sort of organizational chart once you get more than three to five people. Even, even by the time you get to five people, you want to know exactly where people's roles are, responsibilities are, what are they in charge of. Because when it's just you adjusting, it's kind of easy. But if you get to two or three, four people, it gets messy. We have like 15 people just in my clinic alone now. You have to have these structures. So the area manager has practice managers underneath him. Each practice manager is in charge of the individual practice. So imagine, let's just take one clinic as an example. The practice manager then um, has responsibilities that they need to make sure that they look after subcontractors, make sure they look after the CAs, uh, the chiropractic assistants or receptionists. Subcontractors might be people like products distribution. So um, I don't know, let's say we want to print 10,000 leaflets. 
the leaflets will get delivered to my clinic. The manager will take the order. Then they'll call the distribution company, cleaning products, cleaning services. Windows need to be cleaned in the clinic every two weeks. The garden needs to be done. These are the tiny details that we pay so much attention to. Um, and at the same time, the manager in each clinic would look after the chiropractors, have a weekly catch up with them about numbers, statistics, what's gone well, what's not gone so well, how can we improve feedback. And the chiropractors are also kind of reporting to the director, which is me, uh, to the area manager, if they have any concerns, any questions, any upcoming seminars they want to do. And then the chiropractors are seen as, in a way, as the consultant, should we say. So each chiropractor would try and communicate as much as possible with MTs, that stands for massage therapists within the clinic. My clinic has rehab specialists, we provide shockwave therapy as well. Uh, but the chiropractors are seen as the consultants who kind of recommend what type of treatment the patient requires and then communicate to the massage therapist what they need to focus on and how to manage the case as well as possible. So this is so important. If you if you can't see the chart, maybe direct message me, or maybe whatever, like find me on WhatsApp or on uh, some social media platform and I'll share the organization chart that we use that might help you structure your practice better and more effectively. So in summary, guys, you need to know your why. Why is it that you are doing this business thing or not doing it? Super important. I have a friend who we started in our, uh, we started a practice from scratch. It was a new practice and we did so well. It was amazing. That was probably 11 years ago now, 12 years ago. And he chose not to open a practice. Technically, he's probably had more money in the bank than I have. If we talk finances, he's probably had definitely less stress than me. <laughs> He's definitely had more free time, but it just wasn't my personality. So if you're a clinic owner, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I, I still don't think everyone should open a clinic, but if you are running a practice and it's stressful, I want to encourage you that it doesn't have to be that way. When you have things in place, such as teams, procedures, when you know the, like if someone can show you how it works, all you have to do is just apply it and show up every day. And it works amazingly. And it can create an amazing lifestyle for you. It can create an amazing impact on your community. It can create amazing relationships with your team and your patients. Uh, it makes me really sad when I consult with clinics. And I, just before we start, I do this, what's called the clinic audit. So I kind of almost go in their business and see what the numbers are like, what the systems are like, where the bottleneck is in their business and figuring out the strategy for them to get them to um, be less stressed. And it's just really, really sad when you see businesses just not like almost struggling, not operating at all. Um, um, uh, up to 80, 90%. So you've got to put systems in place. You have to, people come, people go, systems are here to stay. Never, ever, ever forget the human element in business. That's a one mistake I made and I learned the hard way and have the self belief that it is possible. I can show you my numbers. I can show you, look at this. These are my actual clinic numbers. In November last year, we had like 2,231 treatments. In December, like the quiet times, we had 2,226. In January this year, just a few weeks ago, 2,277. So we're consistently seeing thousands and thousands of patients um, each month. But the business is predictable because we have the formula. I have the blueprint. And that's what I teach people now. So. This is kind of like my coaching playbook. I'll have phase one to phase five. We'll talk about business strategy. We'll talk about how to inject cash in your business. We talk about how to accelerate your growth, how to automate things. And eventually, if you choose to, how do we take you away from practicing as a chiropractor and actually focusing more on the business, which is what I do now. And I have lots and lots and lots and lots of campaigns we run and things that are pretty exciting that I can share with you. But, um, you can probably, in fact, this is something I share in a previous video, so you can probably go back and watch all that stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm going to skip that stage. This is cool that we, we actually, uh, uh, if you're not part of my email list, this is something that you might find interesting. Or if you don't read the blogs, go to um, practicepeak.co and have a look. This is a campaign and we ran and we collected like 50 plus uh, five star reviews in less than four weeks, which increased my average. Google reviews on Google and increased traffic, conversion, uh, credibility in the area. So it was really, really cool. And it got pa patients talking about it because we, we made it fun. Um, but here is the question is, how much is you not knowing 
how to stream streamline your practice is costing you this is my favorite question it's like if i don't know how to make 100k a month or how to build a team or how to make a million a year it's costing me that much not having that skill set to do that so something to think about if you guys found this video interesting if you find this information helpful and it kind of spiked some excitement let's have a chat um there is no obligation i just offer these at the minute anyway um called free strategy sessions or demo sessions where i can figure out where your clinic is you can tell me what's going well what's not going well like are there anything that is there anything that is really stopping you to get into the next level sometimes it's just not knowing how you don't know what you don't know and that's how i've been able to help clinics so if you are interested we can do that let's have a chat if not please still hope you enjoy the content and enjoy these videos that i'm making or podcasts depending where you're listening to thank you guys for listening until next time and if you do find this information helpful all i'm asking for is just maybe leave me a nice comment and share with someone who also might find this information valuable love and appreciate you guys bye bye